My friends, welcome to 110 amps outside in the middle of winter. I thought I'd catch these 110 amps this morning as long as it lasted because, um, well, the situation is now a bit different. We've got clouds, lots of clouds in front of the sun. So we are down to 20 amps outside. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the off-grid garage here in sunny, hot Australia, kind of, at least. But it's so nice to see 100 amps outside again. We've got end of July and we can already feel the power of the sun when it comes out. We are only one month after the solstice, but it makes already a big difference. So give it another three, four weeks or so maybe, and um, I'm confident we will be fully off-grid again. Well, the good news is in two weeks time, the electrician is coming out again and we are doing more work here on connecting the house. I'm not actually sure if he wants to connect the house as well, but of course we will, well, I'll tell you then when he's here. Of course, I'll make a video then and show you exactly what he's doing. I'm super excited. But in today's video, we want to continue with our garage transformation, with our renovation upgrade of the battery and system room. And we want to work on these roller doors. So what I have here for a while is a weather, what is it called? A weather seal, exactly. Not a weather shield, a weather seal. And this consists out of uh, three parts, A, B, and C. So A is the rail itself, which is already mounted here on the garage door. You can see it over here, that's the profile. And this obviously is part B. This is the, um, what is it called? That's the weather seal. And then there's also a floor seal, which is this one here. So this one goes on the concrete. And then this one here, once attached to the rail, is actually closing the gap to the concrete floor. I can remember when we moved in here in 2009, we already had some weather shield, weather seal it's called, not shield, weather seal mounted here, but it was already brittle and came off completely after a while. So that's why I bought a new one here. And this obviously comes in the flat shape here. We need to bend it like this and then it goes into this rail. Um, not sure how easy that is. I think it's pretty, it will be a difficult task. And to do that, I have to open the other door as well and remove this middle post. They, there is a string, you can't hang on. Yeah, there's actually a string here with a lock up here. And I can pull that and then I can take off the whole middle part of this um, garage door situation here. So it makes it a really nice big opening if you go in with larger vehicles or something or a trailer or have something to load. So we have to open this garage door. I'm not sure if it's actually locked. There should be no obstacles here. Let's give it a try. Oh. Man, I haven't had this roller door open here for a year, two years, probably two years. Okay, and now we pull the string. Oh, hang on. This needs to go all the way up. And now we can pull the string here and take out this whole middle post. There we go. So if I close this again a bit, obviously there's no support here on this side now, but now it gives me access to this um, T-shaped double rail system profile. Oh, it will be a nightmare. I have to take this one off here. Okay, let's figure it out how it works. So I've now cleaned this whole um, T-section rail here with a screwdriver a bit, but they recommend to use some water and soap to lubricate the actual um, profile. So this uh, rubber thingy here slides easier. Water and soap. There you can see the T profile of this rubber. Okay, let me uh, bend this T-section here so it's a bit open here at the beginning and easier to feed in. Okay, hang on, this way around. This does not go in.
I've got it in um, about 20 millimeters and now it's stuck. Oh, that is a nightmare. Uh, okay, um, let me figure something out here what works. Not an easy job. Now I've got soapy hands, it's all... Uh. <laughs> we got them both in, guys. What a f***ing nightmare. Not even Andy too could have helped me here. Not possible, not possible. So, one person had to make sure these um, rubber profile here goes into the actual track. And the other person had to pull on the other side. And then we had to spray uh, WD-40 onto the rubber and into the rail. And pulling in this direction. And we also had to derail the whole roller door here to actually pull it out on the other side. I don't know what shitty system that is. But now it's done and hopefully I have not to do this again in the next 40 years or so. At least. Hopefully. So, this is all in. I have to clean this up a little bit because there is some oil and grease and shit on it. And I also have to make sure that there's no drops of WD-40 on the concrete here where the actual uh, bottom seal will be glued on the concrete. This all needs to be very clean. I'm not sure how to cut them here, but I think... Yeah, if I cut them here at this stage and then in an angle maybe or so, I don't know yet. Let's pull this rubber ceiling quickly into this track. It doesn't say anything here in the manual that you should do this with two persons, but definitely not a one-person job, 100% not. Okay, I'll just um, pull this rubber in just a tiny bit more. Because I think it's a bit stretched now at the moment. I think it's okay. Oh god, and now my hands and arms. It all smells like a mechanic workshop now here. I hate WD-40 and I love it. Okay, I think if I cut it here, because this is already running in the track. Don't want to leave any gaps. I have to cut all the other ends here as well here on this side as well and then the whole roller door needs to go back into the track totally a freaking nightmare so and now I have to derail the roller gate again like this <laughs> and I can cut it Okay, we have to cut this in a little bit here. Otherwise it won't fit the track anymore. I can always trim it a little bit more later on. Okay. Ah, see? That is the problem now. Not a problem. All good. Oh yes, it seems to work. Look at this, and we've got a nice ceiling now to the outside. Flexible. Yeah, that's a bit of a stupid system because this track here on the inside stops a lot further in than the outside track. And then the rubber has no support anymore. And it looks like it is not fitted correctly, but it is. Whoa. Whoa! Yes! That is already tight as it is now. See, this bottom seal goes in like this, roughly. And then this one sits... I don't know if it goes... What is inside, what is outside here? It could be that this one with the profile is the outside and this is exactly where this rubber sits on. So it goes into this, so this rubber here goes into these grooves and really form a barrier where the water cannot get in. Yeah, I think this makes sense. And this one is the inside then. Well, here, this is definitely a different floor seal they're using. So this is the outside here where the ocean and the leaves are. And this thing sits on the outside. So with a profile to the outside, 
And then when we close the roller door, which doesn't close at the moment, it somehow sits like this then. And then it builds a barrier here where no water and dust and leaves and insects are coming in. That's the goal. Can't be that hard, right? Maybe it has been done before on this planet, but um, this is just a guess. I don't know if anyone has done this before. There we go. And this is how it looks on the inside then. Okay, I'll clean this all up here and let it dry. And then we glue the um, floor seal onto the concrete tomorrow. And hopefully this will be successful and another step in the right direction in the transition here of the off-grid garage. It is, I think, almost be o'clock, maybe even later. Ah, the sun is already there. It's about 4.30, I would guess. Oh, it is 4.24. It is beer o'clock. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for all your beer donations. I really appreciate it. And sometimes I really need it. I really need it. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. All right, have a good night's sleep. See you in a second and um, cheers. Good morning and welcome back to the Offcut Garage here. It's the next day, the next beautiful sunny winter morning. As you have seen, I've already cleaned up our concrete uh, slab here in this area where the, um, what is it called? Floor seal. It's the floor seal. This thing here. So it basically starts over here, very close to the metal frame and goes across. Just trying to determine the right location for this floor seal. That is roughly six and a half away from the corner. I'm not sure if I should use the laser for that to get it really straight. Because I don't think our roller door is actually straight. What do you reckon? Is it straight? I think it, it is banded a little bit inwards. I probably cut around this metal plate here, which is... Mm. So if I cut it here, yeah, let's see if I can make this work. I don't know. <laughs> let's take out this middle support again. So we can use the six and a half roughly. Just enough. Oh, it goes quite far. Cuts very easily. And on this side, Okay, so this is roughly here, almost on top of this hump. So I just go along the yellow line. Cuts very, very easily with a sharp knife. Ah, look at this. We make it work. I think I go with the alignment of the roller door here, not with a straight line with a laser or something. I think that's good enough. What do you reckon? Looks pretty even to me. And here you can see the the rubber of the um, door seal actually fits perfectly on this profile here of the floor seal. Look at this. This is a very tight fit. And this should prevent any wind and dust and insects from coming in. Mm, mostly. 99% or maybe 90%, I don't know. But before that, before we had the rubber on, there was a gap of about, oh, probably 10 mil or something under the door. Got a door seal and a floor seal. And there's also a door seal track. Hmm? It's again here, learning with Uncle Andy. <laughs> okay, I think this is how we do it. Let's have a look from the in behind okay this is the yellow line the yellow line is basically the top the top hump of this rubber so even if there's water or something coming in it needs to go over this hump first which is um probably very hard yeah i think that's perfect okay let's line up the other side i i was lazy i have done only one side i thought i cut it in the middle here but this is about much better solution now let's vacuum clean it up as much as possible and then we can mark it and glue it. OK, 
Okay, I'm just cutting around this um, metal beam here as well. I'm not sure if this is necessary, I don't think so. I'll probably take it off. Okay, give it roughly six and a half centimeters. And we close the roller door and see if it looks similar to the other side. Yeah, it sticks out a bit here. You can probably move it in a bit more further over here. Okay, I think that looks good. So I'll just take a pencil now and mark the inner and outer line of our floor seal so I know where to apply the um, adhesive. And I will be using this stuff here, Sally's Liquid Nails. This is not an endorsement for this brand. It just happened to be in the local hardware store. So Liquid Nails, heavy duty, extreme strength. And what it sold to me was twice as strong in half as long. Hey, what kind of video is that here? Definitely a selling point to me. Okay, I'm just going to flick this one over now. Yeah, can clearly see my pencil markings here where the rubber will be. And I'll just do that around 10 millimeters away from the pencil markers so it doesn't spill over too much. All right, big moment. So I push this in place, follow my pencil lines and give it a bit of a push down. That all looks good. Oh, we are a bit out here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's all right. Just making sure it follows my line. Okay, I think um, it takes some um, contact bond two to four minutes, it says. So that's a flexible building adhesive and they said two to four minutes. Okay, fast cure. Mechanical fasteners can be removed after eight hours. Cures in seven days. So it takes a week to fully cure. Okay, what we're going to do now is just close the door. Aim. You want to make sure it's all the way down. And we do the same over here. So it gets a bit of pressure now from the door seal onto the floor seal. We just need to wait for seven days now. <laughs> oh shit, I've got all my stuff inside. Um, okay, so close this. Give it here some extra push here from the door. Yeah, that's all the way down. Can't see any light anywhere coming through. Okay, we have to take this exit here. I think I've parked far enough away. Yes, I did. Okay, my friends. So far, this video from today is sealing up the bottom, the floor track situation, the floor seals. It was a bit of a mission. And I can tell you what, I'm still, you can you smell that? I still got the WD-40 on my hands. Washed my hands a million times with all kinds of soaps and cleaners and everything. And still, I smell like an automotive mechanic. It's not great. So guys, just in case you want to seal your garage door as well, I link all this material down below. You can buy these um, floor seals and door seals on Amazon and eBay. They're coming in three meters and six meter lengths. So for one or two garage doors. And some of them come in a set with the adhesive already included. So it's all very handy and very straightforward to do. So it's not a big deal, as you have just seen. All right, my friends, thank you so much. Oh, we have to, we have to update the um, subscriber count. Otherwise I get in trouble again. Okay, we are exactly at 91503 at the moment. Thank you so much and welcome to all these new subscribers here. It's very exciting. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you for all your generous donations. You are beautiful. 
We will also have a quick members only special video coming up soon. So thank you very much for becoming a member as well and, and supporting me on a regular base. And also thank you for all your emails you have sent me in regards to the JK Inverter BMS. Lots of issues, lots of trouble. So one of the next videos will be about the JK Inverter BMS again and all the issues we are facing right now. And until then guys, you stay charged, stay safe and thanks again for watching. See you then, bye bye. Beautiful. Yes, and yes, you, you can drive over it, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah, I didn't mention that.